interesting short film called Ruin. If you've never seen it, you should check it out. It was good enough to earn him this gig. Let's meet the creators and cast of The Maze Runner right now, starting with that director I was just talking about, Mr. Wes Bell. The author of the book, The Maze Runner, Mr. James Dashner. plays Gally in the film, Mr. Will Poulter. <laughs> Teresa is played by Kaya Scodelario. <laughs> and lastly has Thomas, Mr. Dylan O'Brien. West Ball, by the way. Yes, West Ball. My bad. That's okay. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Dylan, let me ask you, as uh, Thomas, the character you play, yeah. uh, an actor tends to want to use his environment, his memories, the memories he creates for a character. You have none of those advantages in this character. How, yeah. do you, how did you approach it? Um, I mean, just by doing it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you're right. There's not much to go off of. Um, but that's almost cool, it's almost easy, it's very natural for what the character's going through. Um, you know, taking it in just one step at a time, having no recollection of anything, any previous life. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it's easy in a way, it's, it's sort of, um, you know, it's sort of a theme throughout the movie, the mystery. And, um, so playing that, I guess, is important and, and easier when you have nothing to go off of. And Wes, we did mention your uh, short film Ruin, which is terrific. You can see it on YouTube? Can you go on YouTube and see it? See it, see it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You should check it out. It's really, it's pretty amazing. Um, that led to you getting this job. And there's a little bit of a leap from doing a, a short film to a film of this magnitude and this scale. What was the process like that got you this particular project? Yeah, I mean, basically, I, I got a little bit of attention off of that little short. Um, I think probably because of the overgrown concrete aspect of it all. Uh, so while I was at the studio talking about that project, uh, they gave me this book to read and asked me what I would do with it. So I went home and read it, and I immediately kind of fell in love with, um, well, I fell in love with the, the core concept and the characters themselves, and I just the idea of uh, a group of boys trapped in this world for what we'll find out is a, a, a period of years, um, having to create their own little world, you know, and and come up with their own little society in this place without any kind of outside, any outside intervention. Uh, it was a really cool idea for that kind of survivalistic aspect of like Lord of the Flies and those kinds of things. Uh, I, I, I love that kind of stuff. And then uh, on top of that, just the, the kind of menacing aspect on, of the maze outside that's surrounding this place, uh, it, it, it lent itself to some really fun uh, situations. Uh, lots of tension, lots of suspense. Um, it was just a chance to kind of do something really cool and big on adventure and try to do something a little differently than what most things have done uh, coming before us, where we do something that has a little bit more balls to it, you know? Um, so it was it was a lot of fun, and I guess the studio liked what I had to say, and, and, uh, and here we are. And you guys had a screening of the film last night, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And apparently the reaction it's was phenomenal. Some of the, did you see it? So you guys see the screening last night? Yeah. James, what's it like as an author to see these characters, these situations, this story that sprung from your mind up on a screen? Like it's indescribable, man. I, I get I get really emotional when I saw the, the the final version of the film recently. I mean, I was shaking, I was bawling, I was. It was just something I can probably never experience again. But they really captured my vision, and Wes and this amazing, beautiful cast. Especially Will Poulter. Look how beautiful he is. Uh, oh, Dylan. Yeah, he's fine. Anyway, uh, they created this. They took the vision of my book and turned it into this magnificent film. I seriously just, I can't wait for you guys to see it. Well, let's take a look at some more of the vision and the actors. I think we've got, this is the first look for the trailer, right? Yeah, this is our second trailer, basically. The new trailer. New trailer, first time anyone's seen it. You guys here in Hall H, we're going to show you the brand new trailer for The Maze Runner. Thank you. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, feel free to start lining up there at the microphone. We're going to get to as many as we can. I'd like to start off by asking uh, Will, 
Gottlieb in the film, he has sort of cross purposes with, with Thomas and Dylan character in terms of how they approach their situation and their destiny. Can you talk a little bit about your character? Sure, man. Um, I'm still freaking out a little bit after that. That was really awesome. Right? We haven't seen it like properly either, so that's cool for us. Um, uh, yeah, so so Gaddy um, was a really interesting challenge to me, and I'd like to again pass my thanks to Wes, who um, trusted me with the role. Um, it, it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I guess he's the closest thing to, to, to the villain in, in the story, but really what I think we tried to do collaboratively is um, create a character who was more conflicted than, than just kind of one way inclined and, and villainous. Um, I think a lot of what was in James's book and a lot of what ended up being on the page was um, kind of rational and, um, and empathetic from, from Gally. I think you could see his side of the story, even if you didn't necessarily agree with it, you kind of saw where he was coming from, which was important for me, you know, and I, I actually respected the kid, and I kind of, um, I, I could appreciate his point of view. Um, but I suppose the, the, the main thing about Gally, which we kind of drew out, was that he's a bit of a coward, and he is totally willing to be confined to the glade, which is that kind of, manufactured um, environment that you see encased in the four walls, he's made that his home and he's fearful of what is kind of on the outside world. And there's allusions to maybe, you know, the fact that he has some memory of what might be out there. Um, whereas Dylan has this, uh, I think, or sorry, I should say Thomas, has this, um, we love each other in real life, can I just say, we're like full on, you know, it's fully romantic. But, um, um, Thomas kind of seems to have this guttural, sort of instinctive um, urge to, to, to escape. And so we're, we're at polar opposites, the spectrum, and um, you know, that's uh, why on a couple of occasions I've almost come to blows between the two of us. We, we, we kind of hate each other in the film, which you, I guess you'll see. And Kai, let's talk a little bit about being the only female amongst, not only in the, in the role of Teresa, amongst all these guys at the Glade, but also as yourself as an actress as well, what was your experience like? Um, it was wonderful. I mean, um, I've grown up around a lot of guys and loads of my friends and boys. And I really like um, yeah, the good. fun you can have around boys because they kind of talk crap a lot and, <laughs> and it's fun. Um, and we had a wonderful time. Um, we all kind of loved it straight away. And, uh, and it's, it's, I feel so comfortable with them. It's very kind of brotherly because they look after me, but they also bully me and it's nice. I feel like I'm on the same level as them. Um, and it, it just it helped me understand her so much more and, uh, and her need to be as strong as possible and just survive straight away um, to, to be able to prove herself, which I think she does. Right, and I think that's basically because, like, in the, in, the, in the story, there really isn't much of a love story between the two. It's it's more of a mysterious connection that plays itself out over the narrative and, and something hopeful we'll be able to explore further. Um, but uh, it, it helped that you basically kind of became kind of one of the boys with the, and could throw down with the best of them, so. All right, let's go out to the audience for a couple of questions. Hi there, what's your question? Hi, um, I'm Kayla. I was just wondering, like, in particular, if you had any um, scene that you found like the most fun to shoot or anything like that. If... Let's ask all the actors that. What was the uh, was the most fun and the most grueling experiences for you making the film? Um, every scene was the most grueling. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, the whole movie. Most trailer. <laughs> um, I sacrificed limbs on this movie. The most fun was. Uh, I don't know, I really, really liked our wrestling scene. That was fun. Um, that was just one that was awesome that we rehearsed from, you know, a week before we started production, and uh, we didn't shoot until about three weeks in, and it's just such a scene that kind of reminds me of, um, you know, movies that I loved as a kid growing up. Uh, and it's, you know, I loved that it's sort of, for Thomas, the first uh, kind of glimpse you get into seeing how strong he is, you know. Um, you know, he, he takes on Galley. Uh, in the ring. It's really cool, it's really fun, it's a great scene. Yeah, I, I would echo what Bill said and say that that was kind of one of my favorite scenes as well. And then, and then also, like, weirdly, the scenes where, you know, we really get into it as characters, we're, like, facing off with each other. And, and this isn't something you'd maybe expect on a, a platform as big as, you know, a, a Fox film like this and a, and a film that, you know, is based on such a popular novel. But 
you know, we also got a lot of opportunity to to really act in this movie. You know, we we, we were allowed to improvise. We were really allowed to bring our own thoughts and and, um, and ideas to the table. You know. Um, and sorry, Kayla, this is your question, should be there since you. And, um, and you know, and Wes is all about collaboration. I should also say, we weren't laughing at you, by the way, there was someone being an idiot behind you, so that's why, <laughs> we, that's why we were laughing. It wasn't, it wasn't you. Oh, and I think I just got flicked off. Thank you, sir. That's awesome. <laughs> just so random and it kind of is the beauty of this job. Um, it's this gorgeous tree house thing that was built specifically for the film and was really big and was a real tree and swung in the wind. Um, and, and it was the first day where we, 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 we'd become friends but I think it's where we kind of really spent time together as actors and, and kind of juggled with each other and, and uh, for me, it was just a beautiful day of work because I got to just be one-on-one -on -one with him and see the magic that he makes. Um, and, and it was really pretty out there as well. <laughs> My favorite scene was the one scene that I was in. <laughs> there is a camera. You guys gotta look for me in the movie, all right? <laughs> all right, we will. Hi there, what's your question? Hi, um, I actually have a question for Kaya. Um, I'm a big fan of you from Seeing Skins. Yay! <laughs> Right, the English one. <laughs> um, so I was wondering how your character development was different when filming this than from playing Effie. I had a, I had a lot of time with Effie. I was 14 when I started playing her, so I kind of I lived out my teenage issues through her, um, and I was going through all those things at the same time. Um, and she was a very deep character. She's a very important character to me. Um, but with this, it was fun because I could just be completely angry and, you know, hungry. Um, and, and I loved that about this character. She arrives and she's not trying to make friends with anyone. You know, she's not kind of playing with mediating between people. She just wants to survive and she wants to know who she is and where she is. And there's something I really admire about her um, that I kind of, I haven't really had before with a character. She kind of, you know, she, she made me feel a bit braver. Um, and that, you know, the whole thing, I think as a young woman, sometimes you feel like you have to fit a certain box and you have to be a certain person. And both Effie and Teresa were always their own people. And I really respect that. And I kind of wish I could be a little bit more like that sometimes. Um, but they both really inspired me. I'm glad I got to play both of them. Great, thanks. Hi there, what's your question? Hi, I'm Angelica. Um, my question, was there anything in the book that didn't quite make it to the movie that she would have? Well, yes, I, my question is for these two, like, have a full-on fight. Uh, <laughs> they're uh, going to wrestle you know, there's, there's an obvious challenge of turning a book into a movie, but um, I think... Uh, I think basically all the all the all the favorite scenes of the fans have in the book will be in the movie. You know, we definitely changed stuff that uh, I felt like wouldn't be very visual or things that just um, that wouldn't play cinematic like they do in, in, in a novel. Um, but uh, it was all about sort of you know uh, condensing down the story and, and making sure that um, the escalation of, of tension and, and sort of suspense and all that great stuff um, and momentum was the important thing. Of, the movie, so anything that kind of fell away was usually uh, in that sense, but I'm not going to give away the spoilers of what they are. You know, if anybody would be the harshest critic, you'd think it would be me because I wrote the book, and I can just, I can honestly tell you that every change that had to be made made perfect sense and helped the spirit of the book translate even better than the literal translation would have to the big screen. You guys, you're going to love it. That is not a worry. Hi there, what's your question? Hi. Um, with all of the YA dystopian movies and books out there, Maze Runner is one of the few that actually has a male character that's really strong and really developed. How do you think Thomas will hold up in more of a general crowd of the movies? Because they see people like Tris Pryor, Cap Severdeen, or, you know, which one will win a fight, whichever you want to answer. <laughs> uh, Thomas, so you yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if Thomas would, you 
know, beat Katniss in a fight or anything. I think she'd take him out with an arrow before he could even get to her. Uh, he'd run, he'd run away, he'd dodge it. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's funny hearing that, you know. Uh, uh, I forget that, yeah, you know, why everybody's in Robert and are strong female roles. I think that's great. Uh, I think usually what I'm used to is seeing a lot of strong female roles. Uh, it's great that I get to play one. I'm really in love with this character. Um, I love kind of how he, you know, he, he gets a fresh start and uh, a new chance at discovering things inside him that he never knew, you know, just like before. And I think in this specific case, the case it's uh, courage and strength and um, a sense of leadership, you know. And uh, and it's great to kind of follow his journey, you know, starting as the greenie, uh, the newbie, and kind of um, following his just sort of utter defiance uh, uh, throughout the film and, and not willing to just go along with everything and not willing to just let his fear um, you know, kind of hold him, hold him back. He sort of genuinely <clears throat> rather die than, than spend the rest of his life in that glade. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's it's a blessing to play. You know, it's, it's really cool. And I'm sort of a, a, a really big fan of, like, you know, that kind of ordinary kids in extraordinary circumstances, you know. And so those were sort of my favorite movies growing up. So uh, it's great to get to play, you know, and portray. Yeah. Besides the maze, which is the most obvious hurdle in front of these characters, what they're dealing with, the, the thing that terrifies me are the grievers. Can we talk about those just a little bit? Wes, how did you bring those to the screen in order to uh, convey the terror that they certainly do in James' book? Yeah, um, the grievers are obviously, you know, very key parts of the book. These kind of car dogs that are out in the maze and sort of um, terrorize these kids as they try to just escape this place. Um, they are basically their greatest fear. Um, they're 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 very cool. They're they're for me. I was I was looking at things like Jurassic Park and Alien and those kinds of movies and, and the opportunities that I had to kind of play up the kind of monster movie aspects of this thing. And so designing it was uh, was actually a lot of fun. It was me and, a, and another designer named Ken Barthelme. We communicated basically over email and and designed this thing together. And I handed it off to Method. And they kind of brought it to life. Um, but it was really just taking sort of the, the basic ideas that James put in the book. And um, that the, the general idea of being sort of a Frankenstein sort of biomechanical creation uh, is what was an intriguing idea. And I think you'll notice that, and I'm trying very hard to, in, in, the, uh, in the marketing, not give away these things too much, because I, I, I b believe in the idea of surprise in, in the theater. Um, so you'll probably, the, the, the mass, mass audience out there probably won't ever get a truly good look at these things, but, um, um, I guess we are here with just a bunch of friends. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so what we've done for you guys, if you can uh, not spoil too much to everyone outside of here, um, is uh, we've cut together one particular scene where Thomas kind of has a little encounter with one, one of these guys, and uh, you'll get a little taste of uh, what the rest of the movie has in store. Would you guys like to meet the Grievers? What do you guys think? Woo! That's our first scene, and there's a couple more after that, so it gets pretty fun. Could we have time for just a couple more questions if you guys have some more? Hi there, what's your question? Hi, I'm Taryn. Um, I was just wondering in the book, you see that the characters got their names from significant people in history, and you mentioned that Miho. Um, was a name that you kind of created, but I was wondering about Fry Pan, who would really take your child that. <laughs> that is a very specific question. Very good. Um, you know, in the very first draft of the Maze Runner, we find that we found out that Fry Pan's real name was Siggy, which is probably why he goes by Fry Pan. <laughs> So you can do a little brainstorming and research and see who he might have been named after with the name Siggy. I'll leave it at that. Oh, you just gave it away. The short for Sigmund? Yes. Oh. I win. <laughs> <laughs> Give me time for one more question. Hi, I'm Nika. And I'm Hannah. And our question's for Dylan. We just wanted to say that we loved you. And our question is, oh, what was yeah. the most yeah. difficult scene you built? Um, thank you guys, first of all. So sweet. I love the dual question. <laughs> um, uh, Chuck's dead. Um, spoiler. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, Someone's dead. 